Hello, my name is Will Carmack and in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you five tricks you absolutely need to know if you're working in After Effects. From creating fake optical flares with just Gaussian blurs, all the way to creating animated marching ants. You're definitely gonna learn something new today and I have to let you know that this video is sponsored by my amazing sugar daddy, Squarespace. So trick number one is how to turn any lights in the scene into something brighter and has like a light flare. And right here in this example scene, we're gonna isolate these car lights and then add a horizontal optical flare to them. Every visual effects artist should know this trick to make any lights in your scenes really pop. So the first step is taking any scene we want the lights to glow and we're just gonna duplicate it. And if we isolate this layer, we can come up to our effects and presets and we can type in extract. So, and we'll put extract on our duplicated layer. So I use this effect to isolate the brightest pixels in a scene. And since the lights in any scene are gonna be the brightest pixels, if you just drag the black end of extract all the way to the front of the plugin, you're gonna isolate the lights that you wanna turn on really well. And you can see here in this scene, we weren't able to isolate just the lights because there's a few spots in this video where everything's super bright. So all we're gonna do is create a mask and isolate these headlights. And so now with the combination of this mask and the extract effect, we have isolated our car lights. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-compose this and we're gonna name it lights. I can't spell. And we'll unsolo this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this light layer and we'll come up to our effects and presets and we'll type in Gaussian blur. And we're gonna throw that on our light layer. And once you come up to the effect controls, you can crank up the blurriness and you can see what we're doing here. Like the, the further we crank up Gaussian blur, the brighter the lights on the back are getting. So this is with our lights, this is without it. But to create a nice optical flare look, we can come up to the effect controls and change it to horizontal. So now you can look at the lights here and see what we're doing. We're creating these horizontal flares and when we watch this back, you can see how dynamic this makes the lights look. Now to make these lights appear even brighter, you can set this to add. And then a final touch we can add to these lights is if you drop down the opacity, hold alt and click the keyframe, we can type in wiggle 840. So it's gonna wiggle eight times at the value of 40. And so now when we watch this back, these lights just add so much depth and dynamic energy to the scene. So that's trick number one. You can turn any light bright or have an optical flare just with Gaussian blur and isolating out the bright parts of your image. Editing trick number two is adding animated marching ants to anything. Or if you're doing motion graphics or general explainers, this is a great way to focus on and showcase a subject. And it's really easy. What I've already done is I've masked out my subject here. So with your masked out subject selected, you can come up to your effects and presets and type in Vegas. And we'll add Vegas to our dude. Right now you can see it looks really crazy. So over here in the control panels, we'll drop down image contours. We're gonna set the channel from intensity to alpha. And so now you see the lines are all around his body. In rendering in the blend mode, we'll do transparent. So it's just the lines. And we want to do this because let's say later on, we want to add a deep glow to these lines to make them really pop out. Because if we have it on just over, any effect you put on these lines is going to affect the entire thing. So we set it to transparent. How we get the marching ants look is we'll start with the color, we'll change it to white, and under rendering, you'll see hardness. We'll crank hardness up so the lines are thick and hard. And at the very top, you'll see segments. We'll just add a bunch of segments. And then right under that, you'll see length. We'll shorten the length until we get a size that we think is good marching ant size. And you'll notice that they have this weird lowers in opacity at the back of these lines. We don't want that. So you'll see down here at midpoint opacity, we'll just crank that up to 100. So from there, we just play around with the length and the amount of segments. And so now your subject has animated marching ants on top of it. And like I alluded to earlier, we can type in a deep glow effect or any kind of effect you wanna add on these lines. And so now you can add an animation like this mouse coming on the screen. And as soon as the mouse touches him, you can turn on this layer. This just creates a really dynamic scene by being able to really isolate and showcase one specific thing. Also, the marching ants are already moving because he's moving. But if I copy and paste this Vegas effect onto the cursor, so if I play this back, the lines are not moving. So if you're adding this Vegas effect onto a static image, the way you make it rotate 
is over here in the Vegas control panels. You can play around with the rotation and see that's what's making the marching ants move. So if you alt click on rotation and you type in the expression time asterisk 15, it's now gonna spin constantly at a value of 15. So you just have to animate the rotation and the effect controls to make this marching ants move. Trick number three, and probably one of the most important, is being able to isolate effects to just where a mask is. I'm using three different fill effects on one text layer. And the way you separate that out is by masks. And you can do this with a bunch of different effects where you can have like deep glow on one end, but you don't want it on the entire subject, so you just use a mask to isolate it. Let me explain. So here I've 3D tracked the word Italy into this scene of Italy, and what we're gonna do is make this title card the same colors as the Italian flag here. So we'll type in our effects and presets, the fill effect, and so we'll drag fill onto Italy, and then I'll create this mask where just the L and the Y are red. So if I come to my layers panel and I hit E, you'll see the fill effect and we'll drop it down. You'll see this right here, compositing options. If we drop that down, what we're gonna do is click on this plus button. And now if we look what's happened, it's adding the effect to just mask one. And so now if I bring another fill effect onto this layer and I turn it this green of Italy, I can create a second mask around the T and the I. And now if we hit E to bring up our effects, we can drop down fill number two and on compositing options, click this plus button and hit mask two. So now we've applied two different fill effects to one layer. And now something to mention is when you're doing this trick with text and you try and add a stroke, look what happens. So now if you wanna add a stroke to something like this, you have to right click on the layer and go to layer styles and then add a stroke from there. So you can see here I'm adding a stroke. To give you one more little example, I've added the noise effect to this and if I crank up noise to be a lot, you'll see now I have this really noisy looking text, but I think I want it just on the A. So I'm going to create a mask around the A. So if I go to noise in our layers panel and go to compositing options, click the plus and add mask three, now the noise is only on the A. And so that is how you isolate plugins with masks. This is a really powerful trick because you can have a million different plugins on one layer and it's all affecting different parts of your thing. Trick number four is adding a shimmer wipe to like a logo or an image. Every motion designer needs to know this trick. So we're gonna select our layer and type in light sweep. We're gonna drag that onto our layer and you'll see this little line that gets added. We'll be able to move it around like this. What we wanna do is we're gonna animate the width to be bigger and we'll crank up the sweep intensity. So now when you move around the center, it looks like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this all the way over here to the left and we'll create a keyframe for center. And over like five seconds, we'll animate the center to go from left all the way to right. So now when we watch that back, you'll see it swiping from left to right. Even though this looks cool, we're gonna right click on these, go to keyframe assistant and easy ease them. And we'll do one of these moves where you slow down the ending and the beginning with the curve graph here. And now when we watch that back, we have a beautiful logo wipe. And once you add the shimmer sound effect, you have motion graphic magic. And finally, our last trick is turning text and PNG logos into shape layers. This way, you can take any kind of text, but then just isolate like the stroke and then add glowy effects to it animated path layers. So we'll start with text. I'll add in a text layer called night. So the way you would think you would do this, but this is the incorrect way, is that you would just get rid of the fill and then add in a stroke like this over here in the character panel. However, this is actually not the best way to do it because then you can't animate these lines. So you're gonna right click on your text layer and go to create and then create shapes from text layer. So up here in the top, you can see that the fill and the stroke option we're gonna click on fill and get rid of that. So now we can animate the stroke like this. And the reason this is better than the other options is because now under our contents, because it's a shape layer, we can add 
right here and we can add a trim paths. And so now you can see right here, if you animate the start, the edges of your text layer are gonna disappear in this cool shape. Or you can like animate the offset so your text is always moving and it has this like cool look. So we can animate the start of this keyframe to end like this. We'll start at 100. So now you can get something that looks like this. And then you can stylize this however you'd like. Like on this text layer, you can add a deep glow effect. And now you get this nice animate on look. And also a benefit of having it as this shape layer is that you can select the contents and affect the mask path. So now I can change this text layer however I want it to look. Obviously this is kind of crazy looking, but now you have way more control over customizing your text layer. And so how to do that for an image, because for some reason, when you right click on an image and go to create, you can't create mask or shapes. So what I'm gonna do is come up to layer and then auto trace right here. And you can just hit okay on the default settings. You now have this layer that's just a bunch of masks. And just like the last one, you can like move these around. And a quick bonus tip, once you auto trace an image and you get all of these juicy mask lines, if you have the plugin Saber, you can now bring Saber onto this layer. And under Customize Core, you can add layer masks. Set the layer to screen, of course, since the background's now black. And then if you set the render settings down here on alpha mode to enable masks, you get this cool look. And so that is how you turn text and images into customizable shape layers. So those are my five tricks that will make you a better After Effects user. Comment down below if you have any questions. I hope you learned something new, and I have to let you know that this video was sponsored by Squarespace. From online stores and marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is your best option for making a website. If you want an incredibly customized and personalized website, well, you're in luck because with Squarespace's new design system, Squarespace Blueprint, you'll be able to select from professionally curated templates. So you'll be able to pick a design that is good for your vibe or brand. And with their optimized SEO tools, you'll be able to get discovered way faster and way easier. And let's say you're a business person and you've got products you want to sell. And with Squarespace's flexible payments, you'll be able to accept every form of currency, Apple Pay, credit cards, PayPal. You'll even be able to use pay later features. So your online store can sell your goods and you'll be able to make it as convenient as possible for your customers. And lastly, if you don't want to rely on just the professionally designed templates that Squarespace offers, So you can use one of these templates as your starting point. And then from there, use all of the incredible editing tools that Squarespace offers for you to make every page look exactly how you like. And everybody, the best part is I got you a discount code. So if you go to squarespace.com slash Will Carmack, you'll be able to get 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Squarespace. I hope you all check them out. And don't forget, where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will and have a nice day.